Uh, my name is Lloyd, and this is my wife of 59 years, Nancy. Uh, we work for an organization in America called Renewal Ministries, a Catholic organization, and we have been serving the Catholic Church and the Kingdom of God for the last 30 years. Yeah, so happy to meet you, Ms. Helen. Thank you very much. Yeah. We're glad to be here. Well, we were invited. Um, we came to Rwanda the first time in 2004, and um, we were invited uh, by Bishop Kazito. At that time, he was a bishop here in Lingeri. And so we had gone to several of the bishops uh, uh, to uh, tell them who we were and what we did. And when Bishop Cazito heard who we were and the program that we had, he thought it was a very good thing to help them to deal with the problems resulting from the genocide. Uh, because there was a lot of, how would you say, fear, uh, anxiety, hatred, hatred, unforgiveness, you know, many of the negative things that come from the horrible circumstance that occurred then. And so he invited us, and we brought together at the stadium, or well, here, a priest from all of the dioceses in Rwanda, uh, here to Ruangeti, and we taught them for a week. And then we had a, uh, 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 what'd you say, uh, a healing service, a mass, a healing mass, back here in the stadium. And there were so many people that they, they consecrated 50,000 hosts, and they couldn't even get to half the crowd. I don't even know how many people there were, but uh, God worked very powerfully, and there were a lot of people set free, a lot of physical healings. Uh, one of the people that were there was Father Ubal. Uh, he was one of them, the first to learn the five keys, and through all these years, he's faithfully taught the five keys at every one of his healing services and things. But that's how we got here, and since that time, we've gone back. We've gone to Kabagaye uh, many, many times before. Uh, we've been uh, several of the dioceses, wherever uh, that we're invited to come to be able to share what we have, and then people can uh, maybe give them some tools and information uh, to help them to deal with the problems. Not not only the genocide, but everybody has problems in lives. You know, whether it, it be addictions to alcohol or drugs, uh, uh, whether it be addictions to things like pornography, or whether it would be addictions to alcohol. Uh, you know, uh, people have uh, physical ailments too. You know, heart pro high blood pressure things here. And so, if if a lot of these things. Um, uh, if they understand how they can address these things and understand the authority that they have as children of God. You know, when we're baptized, every baptized Christian becomes a part of the family of God. Uh, and we, the Bible says that, you know, we're joint heirs with Christ. That means that not only the things that, not the gold and the silver that Jesus inherited, but the authority that was Jesus. We're joint heirs. We, we inherit a portion of the authority of Jesus in his name. And so we teach people how they can stand and walk in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ uh, and understand who they are as children of God. Uh, that's, that's, I think, the biggest problem. So many people, they don't think well of themselves. Uh, they, they think that either they're, uh, they're, they're, they're not educated enough or they're too sinful. But see, God, is, he knew everything about us before we were born. <laughs> and he knows, he knows a plan he has for us, a plan for good and not for evil. And so, uh, and you know, we try, to, we try to be able to, to bring them into a deeper knowledge. Why don't you share a little bit about what you teach in this? Can you share something? Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say also... Uh, this is what God is pouring out in this day and time when darkness abounds his grace is much bigger much larger and he is bringing in his grace for his people because he wants them to be set free to be to to be able to have a an armor to be able to the knowledge of how the evil one gets into our lives how they can kick him out that they don't we don't have to live like like weeds that are just growing across the road no we we're children of God we've been given things we don't just have to accept all of the bad th stuff that happens to us. So uh, yeah, we've uh, the five keys are they're easy and they're gentle and they're non-confrontational and they're uh, easy to be able to teach even children. If you have a child that has nightmares, you can teach that child in the name of Jesus. You nightmare, get away from me. I have authority over you. Jesus has given me that authority, not you. So get out in the name of Jesus. Teach them while they're small of who they are in Christ, and that they will understand that as they get older, that they don't have to put up with a lot of stuff. Can you go through on. the five keys for them real quick? Well, 
the key number one is repentance and faith. Repentance from major sins, not just feeling sorry for it, but making the decision, repenting of that sin, making the decision to never do it again. Jesus put that together in Mark 1.15. Uh, <clears throat> the king, uh, yeah. yeah, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And uh, so that's number one. Number two is forgiveness. It's the biggest key that there is. It's the biggest power that we own. When you choose to forgive somebody, you no longer are dragging them along behind you. You're no longer letting them hurt you again and again. You've made the decision. You're not doing it for that person. You're doing it for yourself because free unforgiveness is a sin. People don't really quite understand it. They think it's a choice, but it's not. So uh, Jesus on the cross showed us exactly how to do that. Forgive them, Father. They did not know what they were doing. And so he got set free. And that's what he's teaching us. So uh, number one is, is repentance and faith. Number two is forgiveness. Number three is renunciation. Renouncing the works of the evil one. We as Catholics, we every Easter, we renounce Satan, all of his evil works, empty promises. It's part of who we are as as Catholics. So we can, and whether you're Catholic or not, you can still say those words in the name of Jesus. So uh, we renounce, we take up the authority, number four is authority, but we take up that authority and renounce him and command him to leave. Uh, once you can learn how to do that, and it's easy to do that, uh, then he can't come back to you. You've taken away his legal right to be with you. Uh, number five is authority, uh, is a uh, the blessings of God the Father in our identity and in our destiny. Coming to understand who we are in, in, in God the Father, that we are children of God just as Jesus. We're adopted and ransomed children of God, heirs with Christ, and so we have everything that Jesus had. He doesn't give Jesus everything and we have this little bit over here. No, we have everything. So once we begin to realize we can walk on water we can multiply food we can raise the dead do we do that maybe not yet but there it's always possible jesus said i you will do the things i do only more and so we are waiting we have seen blind eyes open we have seen the crippled walk we have seen people that were in terrible bondage of cancers uh, healed, cancers healed, all, uh, but also uh, uh addictions and you know to all sorts of things we have seen them set free. And so we are trying to do what God is calling us to do. But he's given us these keys for the whole world. It's not just here, but it's, it's around the world that God has given it to all of us to be able to, to walk in the freedom that he's given us. Yeah, as one time we tried to pass the one day, great history of Rwanda genocide. Do you see this uh, retreat can help Rwanda to, 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 in that uh, situation? Well, it's, it, it, it's not only Rwanda, though y'all had a, a horrible example of, 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 of hatred and unforgiveness and, and things that well back up and that, that, that are not of God. You know, the things that happened were certainly not of God. They were of the devil and things here. Because you get some beautiful people here in this country. Uh, you got a beautiful land. There, there's food. There's cultivation on the mountains. And, and so you were not, Rwanda's no worse than anybody else in the world. We, we have been, we're, the, the, uh, not the genocide per se, but tribal warfare. Uh, we're in the Sudan, you know, they're still fighting the wars in the Sudan. Uh, even America, every place, unforgiveness is a, we seem to feel like it's our right. Uh, uh, so I, you know, I don't want people to think that the genocide is the only bad thing that ever happens. All of humanity uh, is suffering from this unforgiveness. And, uh, and, and one thing that, that people need to really understand is that forgiveness is not a feeling, it's a decision. You know, when you, you, know, you feel, see someone, but by the grace of God, you say, Jesus, they murdered you. <laughs> they accuse you falsely. All you had ever done was to love people and to heal people and to feed people and to set people free. And yet, and despite all of that, you never hurt anyone. And yet they murdered you. They lied about you. And from the cross, Jesus said to all the people that had done that, he said to his father, Father, forgive them. For they did not know what they were doing. So the power of forgiveness was released by Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. And so that power is already, it's there. 
it, it's we don't have to invent that that it's already there it's given to us by jesus christ so you know even if you feel bad when you say god you know that person there when i feel them i feel anger but that's a feeling that's a temptation that's not that's not unforgiveness to say jesus i made the decision by the grace in your holy name i chose to for, choose to forgive them forgive them father they don't know what they're doing i want to say rwanda you are a shining example we get to go to all these other African countries and different places in the world. You have something special about you. I don't know, I can't put my finger on it, but you are a shining example to the world. What you have gone through and to come to your country and see the, the, what, what's happening here in this country, it is totally amazing to see all of the, I know you're not perfect, nobody's perfect, but but you are prosperous and you are, you are getting there with all of the people. Your land is clean, amazingly clean. And because and so, we've seen other countries and they're not quite there yet, but you are a shining example for them. And we just, God has something special for you, Rwanda. God has something special. He is anointing you. He is telling you that you can tell the world, yes, we went through this absolutely horrible thing. Jerusalem, Hamas. We went through this horrible thing, and yet we've come out the other side, and we've been able to forgive. And God is now blessing us. You see, other people are not our enemy. The devil is our enemy. Behind the genocide, behind the war in uh, Jerusalem, the, behind the war in the Ukraine, it, it's not uh, our enemies, the Bible tells us, it's not flesh and blood. It's not other people. Our enemy is the devil. And he inspires people to do horrible things. And many times they do those things because of their own past has had so much pain. They were never taught truth. The, the truth and the healing for the world is in Jesus Christ. He is the answer to every prayer. He is the answer to salvation. He's the answer to peace in the world. Jesus Christ is a Prince of Peace, the God of glory. So that's the message we have. That's why we're here. We're just, you know, we, we're not big theologians. Uh, we're not, uh, uh, we're, we're just people. Uh, and we're just Catholics that, that God touched our lives and we want to hear his call when Jesus said, go make disciples of the nation. A disciple is not someone, you know, you hear all these times, well, I, there was a, a, a thousand decisions for Jesus today. Or, you know, I'm a follower of Jesus. Well, Jesus don't want followers. He wants disciples. A disciple thinks like Jesus, a disciple feels like Jesus, and a disciple acts like Jesus. And that's why we're here, is to help make disciples here in Rwanda. Thank you very much for your interview. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yeah.